Today we're going to do some bleaching. Um, we're going to, this actually is a card we're going to make, and this is actually a sample that's in the the new idea book and catalog from Stampin' Up! the 2010-2011. And I absolutely love this card. I love the bleaching technique, and I absolutely love Halloween, and everything about this card is just great. So I definitely had to duplicate it. So we're going to go ahead and do this, and I'm going to show you how to do some bleaching. And, um go over some other techniques you can do with it as well and I might actually make another video too with another way you can do bleaching as well so let's go ahead and get started and I'm gonna actually make this entire card with you today um, normally I would just show you the technique and then slap the pieces on but today we're gonna actually do the whole card from start to finish so let's go ahead and get started first thing I'm gonna do is cut my card stock I'm going to use the base of my cardstock is basic gray. It's your standard A2 size card, 8.5 by 11, cut in half at 5.5. We're going to go ahead and fold it over and squeeze it with the bone folder. Okay, and the first thing you're going to need is a stays on ink pad. And you're going to need the Haunted House set from the Haunted House stamp set, stamp <laughs> from the House of Haunts stamp set. See, it's got a tree with an owl, Happy Halloween, the pumpkin, and then we've got the Haunted House. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your stays on ink. And I like to, since this is a solid image and it's a little bit bigger, I like to go ahead and stamp, place my stamp down face up, and then take my ink and ink onto my stamp. And you want to make sure your stays on pad is nice and juicy, I guess you'd say, or inked up. If you haven't refilled it in a while, you want to make sure it's nice and inked up. I actually had to re ink mine because on that first card it was kind of dry. So go ahead and ink it up. Make sure everybody's covered. Everybody's got ink on them. Then go ahead and line your card up. And you're going to want to stamp it in the left-hand corner of your card. This is a thicker image, so you want to make sure you get a good impression. I kind of like to push down on it. You don't want to push too hard, though, because that moon is such a fine line. Sorry, the camera's jiggling a little bit there. Then lift up. You can see I kind of got a little um, thick right there on my line, but that's okay. Alright, set that aside. Set your stays on aside. Took an old aqua painter. And um, I put some bleach into the barrel. I just took the top off. And then I dipped it down into my bleach cup and sucked some bleach up into it. If you don't want to do that, you can also just take the tip of your aqua painter and you could just dip it in the bleach and uh, do it that way. That way you don't have to, you could just clean your um, aqua painter out. The other thing you can do is if you have a blender pen, I don't actually have one here right now, but if you have a blender pen that's been dried up and dried out, take keep those blender pens. Don't throw them away. You want to hang on to them and you want to use those for bleaching. They're perfect for that because you're just going to throw them away and they're dry anyway. You can just dip them into the bleach. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do after you have bleach on the tip of your pen or in the barrel, what I like to do is I don't like to do bleaching where my card is folded in half like this because sometimes depending on what type of bleaching technique you're doing, the bleach can bleed through and go through the other side of the card stock and then onto your inside. So what I recommend is you open face your card or put a piece of scrap paper down in between the layers. And so what we're doing is we're going to color in the moon and the windows. And what that's initially going to do is it's going to bleach out the cardstock. And each different color of cardstock that you bleach on, you try to bleach out, you're going to get a different effect. Like this gray, for example, bleached out to kind of like a vanilla, a vanilla color. And you might put it on a different piece of cardstock, like here I've got a piece of pear pizzazz from the other day. Put some bleach on it and see what that 
And that one kind of comes out in like a grayish color, like a whitish gray. So you can see it's a lot different than the gray. So each time you do it, you're going to get a different effect. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your bleach pen with your bleach all ready to go, and you're just going to color in the moon area, just like you would be coloring it in with ink or chalk paint, whatever your medium is you're using, you're just going to color in with the bleach. You want to try to make sure you don't have like really, really wet, because if you do, you're going to really go outside the lines a lot. And then we're going to go ahead and color in the windows so it looks like it's illuminated from inside. By the door. And even though you're, you're going over the black stays on with the bleach, it's not going to bleach out that black stays on. It's only going to bleach out the basic gray car truck that's behind it. The other thing you can do when you're doing bleaching is you could stamp this image in craft ink and then emboss it in clear powder or black powder. And then when you color over it with your bleach, you're not going to go outside the line because that thick embossed layer is going to prevent you from going outside the line. So, but we didn't do that. This is like a kind of a quick and easy way to do it. All right, so you can see how quickly that turned. So we've got our haunted house all illuminated up. So you go ahead and set that aside. Um, you can see if my pen was soaked a little bit more, it probably would have leaked through, but it didn't. So go ahead and set that aside to dry for a second. It only takes a second. And we're going to go ahead and start on the tag. We're going to cut the tag at, let's measure it here, one and a half by two and a quarter. So one and a half by two and a quarter is the size of the tag. And as you can see on the tag, there is a spider web. And that's going to be stamped in the same color as a car sock, which is peach parfait. So let's go ahead and do that. And this spider web and the spooky is from the Wicked Cool set in the Halloween section. And uh, mine is in clear mount, which is your cling mount foam back stamps. So let's go ahead and stamp up the spider web here. So you're just going to ink it up in your peach parfait. And you're just going to kind of bring it in on the corner here and stamp it like that. See that? Okay, and then next step is we're going to make the tag corners on it. And I just use the tag corner punch for that. Just go ahead and put it in right to the edge, punch it. Right to the edge, punch it. Okay, and then we need to put our ribbon on. And I used, in the sample in the catalog, had a piece of old olive taffeta. I'm going to use the pear pizzazz double stitch ribbon. So we'll go ahead and use that. And I cut a four inch piece is what I had cut earlier to do my knot with. Okay, so what you're going to do is just take it, just tie a basic knot like so, so that you have a flat end and a kind of a bubble end. I'm just going to put it down. And I'm actually using up, I have this glue dot dispenser and this thing is horrible. I hate this thing. So I'm actually going to, I'm trying to work my way through them to use them up. So let's get that out of the way. Go ahead and put your ribbon down. Like so. And then let's trim that up. And 
the next step is we're going to stamp our spooky banner. So you're going to need a piece of Whisper White cardstock. And then you're going to take your stays on pad. Same stamp set, the Wicked Coal. We're going to use the spooky. We're going to put that down on the block. Now you can put the labels on the back of these clear mount stamps so that you can see where your stamp is. I actually don't prefer the labels on all of mine. Some of them I do, some of them I don't. Um, just kind of a preference thing. So you go ahead and stamp your spooky. You could pre-cut this um, card slug if you're making like a mass production of them, but I think it's easier just to stamp it and then trim it down because that way if you get your image on there and it's a little bit crooked you could actually cut that on your paper cutter to correct that without having to worry about it. Paper cutter again. Let's see, this comes out to about three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch is about the thickness of your spooky. And then width wise I thought my first one was a little long so I'm going to say two and a quarter on this one. Then you just cut in your little triangles. They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together ooky, the Adams family. Their house is a museum, when people come to see them, they really are a scream, the Adams family. Neat. Sweet. Petite. So get a witch's shawl on, a broomstick you can crawl on, we're gonna pay a call on the Adams. Alright, the next step is to do the paper piece, paper piercing, and then we have that strip of daffodil delight. Going to use my paper piercing pad and my paper piercing template. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this um, line right here to line it up on the bottom of my cardstock, that way I know I've got a straight line. Neat. Sweet. I'm going to take a strip of Daffodil Delight. And the best way to get these tiny little strips is to cut your cardstock, put it on your paper trimmer, like so, and then start from this side and then measure over how skinny you want it. So I want it to be like an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to just move the card stuck over an eighth of an inch and then I have an eighth of an inch strip. That's perfect. So get a witch's shawl on, a broomstick you can crawl on. We're gonna pay a call on the Adams family.